pardon me, that way is a very nice way. It's pleasant down that way too. Of course, people do go both ways. Am I confusing you on purpose? Of course not. You see, I can't make up my mind because I haven't got one. Only straw. If I haven't got a brain, how can I talk? Hmm. Well, people without brains do an awful lot of talking, don't they? Ashamed of his monstrous form, the beast conceals himself inside his castle with the magic mirror as his only window to the outside world. The rose she had offered was truly an enchanted rose, which would bloom until his 21st year. If he could learn to love another and earn her love in return by the time the last petal fell, then the spell would be broken. If not, he would be doomed to remain a beast for all time. As the years passed, he fell into despair and lost all hope. For who could ever learn to love a beast? I just made the worst mistake of my life. I have caused the kitten apocalypse. I woke up this morning and saw something outside that was glowing green. Naturally, I was curious. So, I put on some protective gloves and I brought it inside and put it in a jar. I asked everyone in my family if they knew what it was but nobody knew. I emailed my science teacher and asked her what it was. She didn't know either. Nobody knew what that disgusting, green, glowing goop was. I found a space scientist website and it showed her email address. So I emailed her. I waited an hour, no response. Just then, my kitten knocked over the jar and ate a teeny Bit of it. I snatched it away before he could eat any more. Great, I thought. Now I'm going to take my kitten to the vet. What on earth am I going to tell them? But that turned out to be the least of my problems. The space scientist finally emailed me back. She wrote, it's alien space goop. Whatever you do, keep it away from kittens. Now, I was really worried. I turned around and my little black kitten had turned into a green kitten. He seemed fine though, so I pet him, but he quickly scratched my hand. Now I'm sitting here, slowly turning green. Part of me wants to alert someone, and the other part of me feels the urge to bite the first person that comes into my room. General Kenobi. Years ago, you served my father in the Clone Wars. Now he begs you to help him in his struggle against the Empire. I regret that I'm unable to present my father's request to you in person, but my ship has fallen under attack, and my mission to bring to Alderaan has failed. I have placed information vital to the survival of the Rebellion in the memory systems of this R2 unit. My father will know how to retrieve it. You must see that it is safely delivered to him on Alderaan. This is our most for hour. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Oh, hi, I'm Pixie. Call me known me as a tooth fairy to collect your teeth under your nasty pillows. What humans don't know is how difficult my job is. Like, newsflash, I ain't gonna pay for this. I'm paying you for your rotten teeth. What kind of deal is that? Keep in mind, I am the size of your teeth and the money I give you. So, yeah, the process takes about an hour per kid. And I'm getting old and tired. Did you know that some humans believe that I take your teeth and move my house out of it? That ain't true. That's disgusting. Well, that's my fat fairy sister, Tonkabro. Oh, Tonkabro, what are you doing here? You heard everything I said? Wait, what's that falling out of your dress? How dare you? That's where all the money went. Well, you humans are gonna have to live with your rotten, falling out teeth the year, cause I'm on vacation. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Okay, here it is. But now which way do I go? That's funny. Wasn't the scarecrow pointing the other way? Don't be silly, Toto. Scarecrows don't move. Hey! 
confused. I think you're trying to tell me which way to go. But are you doing that on purpose, or can't you make up your mind? Ring around the ready, pack a full spears. Thought you'd be pretty foxy, wouldn't you? The last to go will see the three before her, and your pesky little brat, too. How about a little fire, scarecrow? Curse you, little brat! Look what you've done to me! I'm melting! Melting! Oh, what a world! What a world! Who would have thought some pesky little brat like you would destroy such weaknesses? I'm going! Hi, my name's Emma. Can you help me? You can? Thank you. Wait, so did you do the same play before? You were also nervous? Okay. So what did you do? Okay, try not looking at people would help me a lot while doing the play. Do you have any other strategy? One more? What is it? Practicing in front of my family will help me. Thanks again. Now I am not nervous and excited. Now that I am confident in practicing and going on stage, I will make tomorrow the best day of my life. I will always remember these things while I go on stage. I am super excited to go on stage. I am going to do my best. Thank you so much. Listen up, people. I've got a lot to say and not much time to say it. So let's get started. Most fellas around here just love the Grinch. At least before his heart had a growth spurt. Who is he, they say. To lie, cheat, and steal. All because he was jealous. Well, let me ask you this. Who are you to go hating on him? Sure, maybe dumping all the Who's presents off the side of Mount Crumpet was a bit overkill. But if he could hear the Who singing all the way from his cave, I think he had the right to be annoyed. Don't you? And don't even get me started on how annoyed he must have been. He's a green, shriveled up beast who lived right above the happiest town there ever was. And every year, a merry festival went on below him. Did the Who's ever once invite him? Huh? Did they even care about him before he carved the roast beast? I don't think so. With all that being said, I hope the next time you read How the Grinch Stole Christmas, you'll understand his motives. I rest my case. Nico! Nico! Where's the commander of my aerobatic apes? There you are. I have an important task for you. My enemies are about to enter the haunted forest. I want you to arouse your man and snatch the sickening little girl and her equally nauseating little dog. I will conjure up a spell to take the fight out of her. Now, which of my creepy, crawly creations shall I send to play her? The Fliberty Gibbet? No. The fly by night? No. Aha! I have it. The jitterbug. There is no more infectious bug in my book of spells. Once bitten, they can never stop dancing till they drop. And when they do, you shall be there to scoop up the little brat and the little brute and bring them both to me. Now go. Mwah! <laughs>